Eyjafjallajökull. Underneath the Eyjafjallajökull Jörkul Glacier. The eruption at the Eyjafjallajökull Jörkul Glacier was... The volcano underneath the Eyjafjallajökull Glacier. According to reports, the three eruptions of Eyjafla Liukutla on record have e eruption under the Eyjafjallajökull Jörkul Glacier. Iceland's Eyjafjallajökull Liukutlu volcano roared back into life just weeks after it erupted. All right. No matter how it's pronounced, really doesn't matter. I think it's quite clear what the reason is for us not being able to be with you in Belgium today. Our sincerest apologies, but we've done the next best thing. We've made a video for you. Moving on. I'm Aidan Chopra. I'm the product evangelist for Google SketchUp here at Google, and I'm on the right. And I'm John Backus, and I'm the product manager for Google SketchUp. The presentation we're going to do, or we would have done in person, is called, If a Picture's Worth a Thousand Words, What's a 3D Model Worth? And we're going to talk a little bit about SketchUp, a little bit about 3D, and a little bit about 3D printing, obviously. Let's start out with what's SketchUp. Okay, so SketchUp is a 3D modeling program. It's been around for about 10 years, believe it or not, now. Uh, it's born and bred out here in Boulder, Colorado in the United States. And we started SketchUp with the idea that it would be for everyone, 3D for everyone, that it should be a 3D modeling tool that anyone in the world could learn how to use and do useful stuff with. So how are we doing? Uh, at the end of 2008, we measured 1 million unique users of SketchUp in a seven-day period of time. And that's the way we typically track SketchUp usage. We, we look for unique activations of the product. We don't track downloads or purchases of licenses or anything like that. So a million users in a seven-day period is a lot of people. To put that in perspective, there are about 100,000 registered architects in the United States, obviously more worldwide. Uh, so we looked at this and we said, there must be a lot of other stuff that people are doing with SketchUp besides architecture, which was kind of the first market that we found ourselves in. It also turns out that our users are from all around the world. Uh, SketchUp is obviously very popular in the United States, which is the big black region here. Uh, but as you can see in this map, we're being used in a lot of other places as well. SketchUp's available in many different languages. Uh, we hope that we'll add more as things go along. Uh, but this is a, an interesting global phenomenon for us. And it's not just people all over the world using this, right? So it's not just architects around the world. It's all kinds of people using SketchUp. Anybody from grade school kids right up to people working on their master's thesis and PhDs, people making a living with this kind of thing. And the really exciting thing is that they're making all kinds of things. If I go to the Google 3D Warehouse, which is kind of like YouTube for videos, I'm sorry, YouTube for models, uh, and I do a search for chair, I get a lot of chairs. There's a few on this grid here, but notice the little thing at the bottom where it says up to page 10 and then next. If you actually look, there's something like 10,104 chairs. That's of Wednesday of this week available. And that's just the ones that were labeled chair. What if we look for something that's a little bit less conventional, right? Less, less architectural? What about bird? You wouldn't imagine that a bird is the kind of thing that you know would really show up in a, in a 3D modeling inventory. Well, lo and behold, here's an example of one. It's actually a really beautiful little model of an Oriole by a guy named uh, Birdman. Now, why is his name Birdman? Well, it turns out that Birdman, his preoccupation in SketchUp is to model the birds of North America. In fact, if you do a search just for birds, you've got around 1,300 birds in the 3D warehouse. I'm sure we all know what this is. This is the, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this, this is the Icelandic <laughs> volcano by a user named St. Paul, again, just modeled this thing, put it up into the 3D warehouse. If you go to Google Earth and you look at Google Earth in this region, this model will actually show up. This is the, the volcano itself erupting. This model called JPS Films is by a young man, I think he's 14, 15 years old, something like that. The interesting thing about this boy is that he's actually on the autism spectrum. He has autism. He's actually nonverbal. He doesn't speak, really, almost ever. Uh, the cool thing about this is that he uses SketchUp to express himself in, by 3D modeling. And, uh, you know, 3D modeling as a form of expression, just like reading or speaking, that's really cool. This is a model 
Uh, this is actually a YouTube model video of a model of a chili pepper cleaning machine. This was designed as a prototype for a machine that was actually going to be built. They used SketchUp in combination with a plugin called Sketchy Physics to see how this thing was actually going to work. And the, the purpose of this is to separate the chili peppers from, I guess, the sticks and other bits of weedy things that aren't chili peppers. This is a model called uh, the Bamboo Shelter. It was actually one of the finalists in an international competition that we ran with the Guggenheim Museum in New York. This particular model uh, is of a shelter. Uh, I think it's actually called Bamboo Shelter in a Garbage Dump. It was meant to be something that would be bric a brac together by people uh, out of found objects. Um, this was one of 10 finalists out of about 1,500 submissions to the competition. And I. Honestly, I, I have no idea why this is in here. John, why is this in here? Well, there's just all kinds of really unusual stuff in the 3D warehouse. And um, I'm thinking of building one of these in the garage this weekend. I'm sure so you are. I've, uh, <clears throat> I stuck it in here to kind of get some feedback from the audience. But luckily, we can't hear them, I guess. So the story here, the moral of the story is bum, that... Bum, bum, bum. Everybody makes 3D models, and they make them of all kinds of things, and they're all different kinds of people making all different kinds of models, and it's all working. The they, mission is... Except except they don't. They don't, and, and we're going to prove it to you. So Let's do a little experiment here. Okay, now we're going to watch carefully. We're using, we're using the spy satellites that we purchased on eBay. No, no, we're not. We're not. No, we're not. Sorry, the official story is that we're not using the satellites. We're not watching you. Put up your hands right now. So here's the question. How many of you have uh, parents who take photographs? Photographs of grandkids, for example. Raise your hands. We're watching. Look around. Now that's a lot of hands. That's, a, that's just about everybody. Probably I'm going to wager everybody. that's just about everybody. Right. Now. Okay. Now how many of your parents build 3D models? Hands still up? Any hands? Any hands? Really? So why is that? Why isn't everybody building 3D models? Okay, so let's look at this problem. Conventional wisdom would say that uh, things that are expensive and hard probably don't have a lot of people doing them. And things that are cheap and easy probably have more people doing them. I think we probably all agree with that. Absolutely. So let's just look and this isn't a really formal analysis, but let's look at uh, price as one axis for thinking about 3D modeling. So on one hand, you might have a free product. On the other hand, it could cost, let's say, $10,000. So I, I did a quick little uh, Google search to see if I could find some basic kind of approximate pricing information for some of the more popular 3D modeling packages out there. And you can see there's a range. You know, And actually, there are some that I found that wouldn't fit on this slide that are quite expensive. Uh, there's a sort of sweet spot in the middle around four or five thousand dollars and and then of course prices are driving down all the time and 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 there are some products that are even cheaper than that SketchUp of course is free so looking at this you would probably say okay free products are gonna have lots and lots of use right expensive products less use turns out we don't really know exactly how many users are are using most of the products that were on that slide, but I can tell you, and actually we, we looked at it earlier, that there are at least a million people a week using a free product. So that kind of supports this idea. Thing is, price probably isn't the only thing that keeps people from using 3D modeling tools. There are probably other limiting factors that we've got to think about. So 